sharks. It only takes one look to understand who reigns over the underwater world of the ocean. Whether it's the open sea or coral reefs, sharks have found an answer for every challenge. In this underwater realm, they are the undisputed kings. Most humans only dare venture into their world with the protection of technology. But what happens if you can only approach them closely by rejecting this protection? Adventure Ocean Quest. An encounter with a world under the waves. With divers who become underwater beings themselves. They work together with scientists on all the world's oceans. Deep under the surface of the water. Without a sound and without a breath. Adventure in the depths of the sea, the likes of which has never been seen before. The South Pacific, a world of open sea dotted with small islands. This is the starting point for an extraordinary expedition into the world of one of the most bizarre and mysterious shark species, the Great Hammerhead. Their aim is to get closer than ever before to this mighty ocean predator without the help of any technology. It is a journey into a different world. The hunt for scientific insights takes courage, skill and self-control and a deep fascination with nature. In Polynesia, the Great Hammerhead, it's the, the king of the sharks. I think they were right. The old Polynesian have seen this creature for probably uh, three or four thousand years. There is something about uh, its presence in the water. So uh, yes, for me, it's probably the, the king of the shark as well. Morea, an island in the South Pacific that captures the essence of a tropical idol. Green volcanic peaks provide an unrivaled view of the surrounding ocean. French underwater cameraman Christian Petron and two of the best free divers in the world are about to embark on their mission. The Belgian diver Frédéric Bouy holds several free diving world records. And the Canadian world-class free diver William Winram will work closely with Fred as his safety diver. Every island in French Polynesia offers a unique world, but they all have one thing in common. Turquoise bays conceal colorful coral reefs and the sea forms a major part of life for local people. Morea is the base of the French Oceanographic Institute Criob, where the shark specialist Johan Mourier conducts his research. Hi Fred, Hi welcome Johan. to Criob. Ah, thanks. Good. We go? We go. Johan Mourier specializes on lemon sharks and uses some interesting techniques that can also be used to study other types of shark. You also have planned to work with other species uh, somewhere else. Uh, what's the next uh, step for you? We will go to Rangira and uh, try to tag some uh, hammerhead. Mm -hmm. And this is a species that is uh, uh, usually found in Rangira, but it's very difficult worldwide to, uh, to find this shark. And, and nobody knows what they do during the year when they're not in Rangiroa. They might be traveling or maybe spending time in open water like oceanic white tips or something. Yeah, you, we, uh, we only know that uh, we can see some individuals uh, coming to, uh, to Rangiroa, uh, but we don't know where they are uh, going. So there is two kind of techniques we can use there because we don't know what they do. We can put some acoustic tags to, and uh, with a receiver uh, for the resilient sharks for the, the, to see if, they, yeah. if it's resilient shark mm -hmm. okay. and um, we can also put some satellite tags 
and uh, if they migrate, we will be able to know where they are going. This shark, uh, the great amaret, is uh, quite a shy species, so that's why you, uh, we need your help to uh, to tag it because you don't do bubbles, and uh, you will be able to go closer uh, to the shark, and it will be easier for us to tag it. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy to be here again and uh, and try to to do that. Rangiroa lies 250 kilometers to the northeast of Tahiti. And with its 80 kilometers length and up to 32 kilometers wide, it is one of the four biggest atolls on Earth. Its name translates as Endless Sky, a reflection of its big skies and open spaces. About 2,000 people live on the biggest of this coral island chain, which is dissected by hundreds of small channels. This is where the ebb and flow of the tides supplies a multitude of food and most of the underwater life congregates. This will be the diver's starting point. Uh, we will uh, attract uh, some uh, big sharks with uh, a bait and we will see what happens. But we hope to, uh, to see maybe hammerheads and uh, maybe uh, tigers. So we never know what to attract, but we hope to, uh, to see big sharks. The weather isn't on the side of the divers. Wind creates waves and difficult currents. Clouds darken the otherwise bright underwater world. But still, the sheer diversity of the underwater world at Rangiroa is impressive. A massive shoal of humpback red snappers is having a rest after the exertions of their nighttime hunting. They are predators, but during the day, they congregate in large shoals to seek protection from bigger hunters. The reef is teeming with wildlife. But there is no sign of great hammerhead sharks. In the wide expanse of the South Pacific, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Again and again, the free divers go down to look for them. They have to remain vigilant. Other sharks are ready and waiting. Gray reef sharks. They often congregate in the channels between the islands. Gray reef sharks are generally curious, but not aggressive towards people. And in contrast to many types of shark, they are still relatively common. They make a nice photo opportunity for Will. Growing to a length of about 2.5 meters, they can dive to an impressive depth of around 300 meters in pursuit of prey. For the team, they're a good sign. These sharks are not just hunters. They're also prey, and their predators include the great hammerhead. Perhaps their presence means that the team have a good chance of finding their shy targets after all. This shark has already been a target of humans and has lost his dorsal fin. Although Fred and Will are surrounded by sharks, they remain calm. Their controlled movements and noiseless presence means the sharks are relaxed and allow them to stay nearby. But bad weather means it's too dangerous to stay in the water. The storm is brewing, and the expedition abruptly has to abandon their search. Today, not a lot of light. Very rainy, but you see it's really messy. That's the lagoon of Hongiroa, and uh, you see the lagoon is uh, like a rough sea, which is not common, and uh, it's bad weather. The boats have to be secured. Although this is the rainy season, the constant bad weather is very unusual. 
One low pressure system follows the next. Bad underwater visibility makes the search for the hammerheads even more difficult. And the rough waves would make it impossible for the divers to return to the boat. But there is a glimmer of hope. The weather forecast for the next few days sounds reassuring. Perhaps they're in luck. The weather clears up. The team is up early to get ready for their outing. Carefully, they load the expensive camera and scientific equipment. Their destination is the outer wall of the reef, where a channel opens from the islands into the open sea. It's the beginning of a long day. The marine biologists usually have to contend with a serious disadvantage during their efforts to observe the animals underwater. Their diving equipment is noisy and can be heard from far away. It is disruptive and frightening for the animals. Free divers, on the other hand, glide noiselessly through the water. Years of training allow them to stay even at greater depths for minutes at a time. It makes them perfect underwater naturalists. Without any technical aids, they search for the shy hammerheads and manage to get close to them. They're not perceived as a threat. And here he is, the king of the Polynesian sharks. It emerges as if from nowhere and quickly disappears again. But at least the divers now know that this is a good spot to place their receivers. These will serve to register signals emitted by the transmitters that they hope to attach to the sharks. They install a concrete base at a depth of 25 meters to anchor the receiver. An eagle ray approaches. They are one of the main prey species for the hammerheads. Perhaps this too is a good sign. Fred also finds a hawksbill turtle nearby. They are now critically endangered and a very rare find. Marine turtles are still hunted for their meat and shells and threatened with extinction. They are usually very shy, but this one doesn't seem to feel threatened by Fred's presence. It's busily looking for food, mainly sponges that live amongst the corals. While the scientists install the receivers at different locations around the reef, Fred continues his search for the hammerheads. But since his brief encounter, he's not seen any sign of the predators. But there are other types of shark everywhere. The divers have to stay alert at all times. The receiver is installed very carefully. Hopefully, it'll record valuable data for the next four years. Silvertip sharks emerge from the depths of the ocean. It's certainly a lot easier to observe these sharks since they are very curious and approach the divers. They want to find out if it might be worth launching an attack. 
they invest a lot of time to weigh up the situation. Fred and Will don't take the situation lightly and stay very alert. They make sure never to turn their backs to the predators. As long as they can maintain eye contact and don't give the sharks the chance to launch a surprise attack, they're safe. The sharks will not take the risks of attacking an unknown adversary without the element of surprise. While the gray reef sharks always stay near the coral atoll, these bigger silvertip sharks often venture further into the open sea. The outer reef area is their preferred habitat. They're not known to be aggressive towards humans, but down here, nothing can be taken for granted. The sharks do keep a very wary eye on Fred and Will. Then, the divers receive other visitors. Mammals, just like themselves. Curious and playful in the weightlessness of the ocean, they come to investigate the divers. Dolphins are essentially perfectly adapted free divers. They can hold their breath for up to 15 minutes and reach incredible depths of up to 300 meters. The dolphins of Rangiroa have been used to people for a very long time. They are inquisitive and keep only a very small safety distance to the divers. Humans have always been fascinated with the dolphin's playful group behavior and curious nature. And while many shark species also prey on their own kind, dolphins are very sociable animals. These highly developed and successful predators don't spend all day in pursuit of prey. Dolphins have time to play and to enjoy life. For many people, they represent an ideal lifestyle, free and full of a love for life. They decide how long they want to spend with people. Then, they vanish again in the wide expanses of their underwater home. It's been a gripping dive, but the mission to meet great hammerhead sharks face to face was disappointing. At present, there is a lot of um, eager ray in the past that is one of the favorite prey of the great hammerhead. And maybe the sharks were not pretty excited because they already have eaten uh, many prey and are not hungry uh, yet at the moment. So we'll see to, uh, to try again and maybe get back an uh, attack shark. Yeah, all the boats find tiger sharks and hammerheads and we find silver tips, which for me is my first time with the silver tips. And they're cool, I like them. But they are 
That one was just like a Galapagos. Nice. Coming behind and you turn around and he's like, yeah. It's their so me, specific cuisine. Yeah. Yeah. It was not there. <laughs> so, still, there's a lot of life here. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Huge amounts of fish. Huge, yes. huge, huge. So, that oh, was a nice, nice experience. No, no, it's good to be in the water. It's just sad that they don't yeah. find what we need. Yep. Time for a well earned rest while waiting for better weather conditions. The South Pacific continues to present itself from a side that isn't exactly the way it's portrayed in travel catalogs. The divers use their free time to look at a receiver that Johan has recovered from the seabed. So uh, now we have uh, this uh, two sharks data. Uh, there is an interesting pattern. So that would be really interesting to uh, to tag more sharks to, uh, to see what happened mm -hmm. and to see if they all have this behavior because we, at this point, we, we had only two, two sharks. sharks. So they seem to stay in this area in fe until February and to tag with acoustic, both with acoustic and satellite tags, we, we could uh, gain uh, more information about yeah. their behavior. Ideally, two tags on each so, shark would be good. Yeah, this is a satellite tag. So on this tag, we have a different sensor that will uh, store information about um, the temperature, the depth of the shark, and uh, also the light. And with the light, you can, uh, with algorithms... Determine it, the position yeah, of the shark. Yeah, determine the position of the shark. And so we can, uh, usually we put this for a couple, for different months, like usually it's better to uh, to put like uh, five or six months of data, mm -hmm. and after you, you get this whole information when the tag is <coughs> detached. Mm -hmm. The hammerhead is a big pelagic shark that navigates a lot, and when you find him, or I would say more when he finds you, uh, you have like 30 seconds to, to react because uh, it's a very shy animal and uh, it's just doing one or two turns, check you out, and then it leaves and disappears in the blue. And uh, sometimes you wait for two and a half hours to have uh, 20 or 30 seconds of possible uh, encounter. So within these 30 seconds, you have to do your dive, approach him without scaring him, and find the right spot for the, the tag, so it's not easy. And here we, we struggle a lot. We did a lot of dive, a lot of days in the water, in the same place, waiting, waiting for him. And uh, so we are really curious to see uh, where that shark went because they are very strong swimmers, so they might do thousands of kilometers. We have no idea. So it would be really cool to have the, the, the data from the, the tag and see where uh, the animal went. But Johan has to return to his base on Morea on the next available flight. The search for the great hammerhead sharks has to be put on hold because his ongoing lemon shark research cannot wait any longer. Fred and Will will join him again on Morea. But first, they plan a visit to a very special place on Rangiroa, the Blue Lagoon. It is a protected area and plans to build hotels and tourist resorts were thankfully never put into action. The palm trees on the beaches are home to a rich variety of bird species. It includes a number of terns like blue and black knotties. Even the violet lorikeet, which has vanished from the majority of South Pacific Islands, still survives here. The Blue Lagoon is also a nursery for black-tipped sharks. In this sheltered bay, they have little to fear and grow up in relative safety.
Although some adults have been measured at two meters, black tip sharks generally only grow to about one and a half meters and weigh about 18 kilos. There are only a few places left on Earth where animals are left in peace from tourists and protected from hunters. The Blue Lagoon of Rangiroa is one of them. Fred and Will return to Morea to join Johan in his work with lemon sharks. Just like the Blue Lagoon of Rangiroa, there are special places on Morea where young lemon sharks grow up in peace. Yeah. Yeah, it's losing, losing. Great. Okay. okay, let's go. Let's go. Johan puts out nets to examine the young sharks in more detail. How long will they stay in here before they're big enough to go out to the outside of the reef? Um, we. We don't really know, but I'm sure they still uh, stay for maybe uh, one year. Yeah. I have a sample, uh, an individual, uh, two year, for two years in the, on the same site. Ah, okay. So we sample mm. the same individual. But I think uh, when they are growing, they, they are expanding their home range. And uh, the home range is growing. And they will, uh, they will go further and further in the lagoon. But they still come here to protect? I but think they, they still okay, coming right. in this area to hunt or okay. things like this. And after the first uh, lemon sharks we saw uh, outside the reef is uh, about uh, two meters. So I think they, they are using the lagoon to grow uh, until uh, two meters and after they can they start out. to come back to uh, go on the outside of the reef. Outside of the, reef. the researchers capture some of the young animals to study their development in detail. The shark's yellow or olive coloration now becomes obvious. It is a kind of camouflage against the reefs and sandy sea bottom of their home range. So here we have a female. So I will just need help to carry the shark. We have here, look, we have the umbilical, umbilical scar. So it's a new individual. Just born like a month ago. Okay. Will? Can you uh, grab it? What? What? Pick up for your hand. I will do a gent or something. Okay. They're beautiful little yeah. creatures, huh? You want to measure the tail? Yeah, the whole body. Yeah. At birth, these sharks are about 60 centimeters long. But by the time they reach adulthood, they will have grown to around three and a half meters. Adult lemon sharks may look threatening, but lethal attacks on humans are unheard of. Okay. So it's a uh, 69 uh, uh, centimeter. Now I will take a genetic sample. Taking it from here, from the tail. Big mouth. Yeah. Relative to their little body, yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Mm. Let me, uh, yeah. Oh, he's okay. Don't worry. Enfin, peut-être tu peux le refaire. Enfin, c'est un coup près, mais juste. I put the, the sp sample in the alcohol to, for future genetic analysis, so to ext extract uh, DNA. So it can, uh, just take it for a long time. Okay. Okay. We can, can let, let him go. go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mais va, mon ami. That's what you want to. It's beautiful. It's yeah. like uh, the 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 big one, but uh, in small. Huh? It's, uh, yeah. Really look like the beautiful real thing. little creatures. <laughs> Their eyes are amazing. Adult lemon sharks are only found outside the bays of Morea. The crew gets the necessary equipment ready for their dives the next day.
Free divers don't need much equipment, but their special carbon fiber flippers allow them maximum maneuverability with minimum effort. In order to tag the sharks, the free divers use modified harpoons. Johan will have to use conventional diving equipment, complete with air tanks. Uh, for tagging, I always use a modified spearion. Uh, it's a special shaft modified to uh, insert the dart uh, of the tag in the shark. Uh, but otherwise, the spearion is a, is a regular spearion. It's just the shaft that is modified. The team is aiming for the outside of the reef surrounding the island. The scientists want to pass through a channel in the reef and target a spot where they've repeatedly come across lemon sharks in the past. have to be careful uh, to tag the shark after it passes you, okay? So uh, like from the, the side, the back side of the shark. So when you tag it, when you will start because he, he feels the shaft and the tag inside him, he will run away. And uh, if you tag it uh, when he's facing you, he might run away and feel trapped and maybe try to bite you. So always have the shark passing you and then tag it so he can just run away uh, in open water. That's very important. Christian Petron will follow the free divers at a distance. They can't afford to have any disturbance to their work. It is simply too difficult and too dangerous. It's much easier to, uh, to tag sharks uh, without uh, bu any bubbles from the, the tanks, uh, diving tanks. and. Um, so that they, can, uh, they can't disturb the sharks and going uh, closer to the sharks and tag in the, in the good way. And so uh, I will show um, Fred uh, which shark to tag and he will uh, try to, to tag it. We try to, um, we try to tag a resident shark. Today it's a resident female we are looking for. And so we hope there, there is a resident female underwater. Lemon sharks are impressive animals. They're among the biggest sharks in the ocean. The diver's work starts with trying to get the animals used to their presence. Lemon sharks have very few natural enemies. The only threat comes from a select few other shark species, or chillingly, their own kind. Other kinds of shark are also inquisitive and approach the divers. They are gray reef sharks and black type sharks. Lemon sharks tend to hunt all sorts of fish, including smaller sharks and even juveniles of their own kind. But stingrays, crustaceans, octopus, and squid are also on their menu. But although the free divers can get close to the animals, the real test is to get the right angle for a successful shot near the back fin. Johan stays at a distance and takes photographs of the animals for his database. Fred is a very experienced fish tagger. His calm patience ensures that the animals aren't nervous. Only a calmly swimming shark can be harpooned with precision. Frightened animals will quickly disappear, or worse, aggressive animals could launch an attack.
Since shark skin is unusually tough, the harpoon has to be fired from point-blank range to penetrate it. It is quite a tall order. Again and again, the free divers select a target, but decide not to shoot at the last minute to avoid accidentally injuring the animals. Johan checks the receiver. Four years underwater is a long time. Fred finally decides to shoot. The transmitter is well placed. Johan documents the tag. Fred has reloaded the harpoon and is ready for another attempt. He's in luck. A big female makes for an ideal target. This transmitter is also secure and well-placed. In the next few years, the researchers will find out where the lemon sharks spend their time around Morea, if they have a preference for certain locations, or if they spend their time spread right around the atoll. Johan passes the next transmitter to Fred. The mission is complete. It's been an all-round success. For Fred and Will, this was not a difficult operation. But that will be quite a different matter when it comes to the great hammerheads. Even just tracking these sharks is a serious challenge. They return to base. Once again, the divers have witnessed the distinctive sets of behavior that different types of shark have developed. And each individual shark has its own personality. It doesn't do them justice just to distinguish between more or less aggressive animals. Here, on, during that trip, uh, I, I can say uh, I met the, the grumpy lemon shark because these guys are really grumpy. They are like old men, uh, always a bit frustrated and uh, trying to get a bite. And you never know exactly what uh, they think. But uh, at the end, you see they are just like other sharks and uh, beautiful creatures and fragile that we have to uh, uh, try to, uh, to protect, but they are very grumpy. The team returns to Rangiroa one last time. Divers there have come across some great hammerheads and contacted Johan. They're spotted more often at this atoll than anywhere else, probably because their main prey, the gray reef sharks and rays, is available in large numbers. Johan spends the remains of the day to prepare the satellite tags. Without this revolutionary technology, scientists would have practically no chance to track the movements of underwater creatures. Amongst other details, Johan programs the tags with the positioning data at the beginning of the expedition. He also predetermines the amount of time the tag should remain in place before it is released. But he remains skeptical. So everything is ready, and we will see together a shark to tag. The hope to finally get an insight into the secret lives of the great hammerheads depends on the small satellite transmitter. But it can only serve its purpose if the free divers actually manage to tag a shark. Everyone is apprehensive. We 
just have to be at the right place at the right time. I think it would be difficult uh, for them to tank it, but hope they will have the, the chance to do it. We do our best. The job isn't any easier for the cameraman. They're not allowed to interrupt the work of the researchers. Yet, they're out to get the most sensational pictures of these rare animals. It is almost an impossible task. And to have any chance at all of succeeding in their mission, the free divers need help. The shy great hammerhead sharks have an exceptionally well-developed sense of smell. So Johan has resorted to using a bait fish, a dead reef shark. Its scent will be carried on the ocean currents over many kilometers. The divers try to remain as inconspicuous as possible and wait. Then, in the distance, they spot the contours of a great hammerhead shark. Fred remains motionless to see if the animal is going to come any closer. But the scent has also attracted a tiger shark, one of the most dangerous sharks for a human being in the water. And this one is not at all shy. Some of the biggest sharks in the world now gather in the immediate vicinity of the freedivers. Great hammerheads tend to stay close to shore along the tropical and subtropical coastlines of the world. A fully grown hammerhead can reach between three and six meters and weighs up to 500 kilos. They're amongst the most impressive creatures in the ocean. But science still has no concrete answer to the question of why these sharks have such a bizarre head shape. The researchers want to find out what advantages the hammerhead sharks get from this strange adaptation. Some scientists think it provides aerodynamic advantages. The shape could provide greater stability during lightning-fast maneuvers in the water. Hammerheads have also been observed using their heads to pin rays to the ground before eating them. The extreme width of their heads could make it easier to receive the electromagnetic signals of their prey. Or perhaps the hammerheads are able to build up three-dimensional impressions of their surroundings through their sense of smell. But all of these theories have yet to be confirmed. Gradually, the hammerhead shark approaches the bait. But the tiger shark is also still nearby. Slowly, the circles of the hammerhead around the bait are getting tighter, bringing the shark closer to the divers. The free divers finally have the chance to take some photographs for Johann's catalog.
Now they're ready for action. Fred collects the tagging harpoon. A second hammerhead shows up. It's a great sign. Perhaps the divers will finally be in luck. The animals seem to be gaining in confidence around the divers. But to be successful in their tagging mission, everything has to be just right. This will be far more difficult than tagging the lemon sharks. The best time to approach is when the shark is busy tucking into the bait. Fred approaches directly above the shark. But the tip of the harpoon bounces off the tough skin of the shark. Will tries a different strategy. He stays on the seabed until he spots a chance to shoot. He lies in wait like a hunter. And the chance arrives. The shark passes him at close range. But still, Will decides against a shot. He could easily injure the animal from this angle. They have to get the timing exactly right, and they need a double dose of luck. Eventually, success. The transmitter is secure. A hard day's work for the free divers. The hammerhead is very tough skin. The first uh, shot, Fred was, for any other shark, perfect, mm. perfect position, close enough, but it uh, bounced off. So, and the rush was on to retrieve the tag, reload the gun, replace the tag, and then wait for the animal to return. But uh, the second shot was perfect. It's a very difficult animal yeah. to work with. They don't come from the direction you expect. But the thing is, it's not arriving upstream like other sharks. It's always the first time, every time he was on the site, he comes downstream. Yeah, yeah, they don't, they don't come from the direction the current is flowing. They come from yeah, with the current. Every sea creature is coming up, yeah. up current. Yeah. And these things are going down current. Yeah. So maybe they saw us feel it before and do a big turn and uh -huh. come back to get I the... I think they sent it and they go around and they, yeah, yeah, they come. Yeah, usually they just go to the source. The dive team has completed their work, but this is only the beginning for the scientists. They now have to hope that the transmitter can collect as much data as possible. When it eventually returns from the depths of the ocean, it will cast some light on the secret life of the king of the sharks. Every time you work with a new species, uh, you have to adapt, uh, because the shark won't adapt to you, of course. Uh, so basically, the techniques are the same. Uh, I use the, the sinking technique we use in spray fishing, or waiting technique at the bottom. But uh, you always have to trim it, uh, because every animal reacts differently. Uh, the great amaret is very fast, won't stay uh, long on site, turning around. It just satisfies its curiosity, and then leaves. Other sharks will stay there for half an hour, and uh, you have a lot of time to figure out how you're going to work with it. So uh, you have to be very, very adaptive. And uh, I noticed that within the hammerheads, they also have different personalities. One was more, um, uh, I would say, uh, 
curious about us and stayed a bit longer and came back and came back every five, six minutes he was coming back. Uh, but another one just came 30 seconds and left. We haven't seen him. So uh, you really have to be prepared and uh, adaptive. Uh, that's also the fun part of, the, of that job. Uh, but it's probably the most difficult shark I had to work with and probably one of the most difficult thing I ever did freediving, to tag that hammerhead. Even though it was in 15 or 16 meters of water, not a long dive, but just uh, the dedication, the timing, the mindset, and all that, uh, putting everything together. He had a lot of current that day, uh, and also being able to have uh, a camera not too far. It was very difficult to put everything together for, uh, for success. So it, yeah, it was probably one of the most difficult thing I did freediving.